Cheers, my Richies, and welcome back to another episode of the Sunday Strategy Sessions here on the Make Life Rich Movement podcast. Let's take a little swig of our iced coffee because today's episode may be just what you've been looking for if you find yourself in the middle of a career or entrepreneurial pivot. So let's bevy up. Okay. What I'm going to talk about today, something has been heavy on my mind for, gosh, a year now. And I had a lot of things have to kind of like be rectified and put out there and like coalesced in order for me to even get to this place right here right now to like make this podcast episode and put it out there so other people can kind of think about this too for themselves if they're in that same place. So if you've been a longtime listener, you know that um, almost three years ago this August, um, I left Philadelphia with my husband. We moved to my hometown. At the time, I was working on and creating a course um, and a workbook and completed it and then kind of realized I didn't take full advantage of the true move and change because I just kept doing what I had always been doing, which was business development, sales, marketing, PR, branding, and in my heart... I knew that I wanted to focus my entrepreneurial endeavors on helping others to feel happier, helping others to feel more positive, and helping others to kind of like just jumpstart their mindset into a different direction that's going to change their life in the way that mindset development and positive thinking uh, has changed my life. And instead, I buried that little, that little, like I could hear something that was like, girl, this would be the perfect time to start in the right direction that your heart and your soul are aligned with. And let's put this stuff you've relied on for the last, at the time, 13 years that, yeah, you were good at, but like the passion for this topic was dwindling quickly out of my soul. It was painting me to do PR work and the industry in general had already changed so much that like things were completely different than they were when I had started and even towards the end things were just um, very pay to play and I hated to subject small business owners to such things when in reality media results in almost no sales. (laughs) There has to be some level of direct consumer interaction that doesn't involve a media outlet to kind of get you out in front of the people. I just hunkered down on in on what I knew. I'm like, no, it'll be easy. I can rattle this course off like that. It's an amazing course. Like it's a five and a half hour, 11 module, 40 plus templates, like course that's going to help you to literally create your custom blueprint of strategy for PR, sales, marketing, and branding. For your business that's going to replace the need for you to hire a publicist or brand manager or someone to just help you get your business in order so that everything is working in line and talking to each other that just ultimately leads to you building your audience which leads to building a core group of your audience which leads to sales which leads to repeat sales so this course that I put together I was so proud of it was perfect it was just literally me wrapped up in a little digital package and I was so pleased because I am one person and I can only take on so many clients when I was and don't get me wrong every now and then if it's something that I really enjoy or a brand or a person that I'm like I'm in what do you need I will jump on board and put my PR and my business development hat on no problem but in reality I want to apply the strategy and the systems and the mindset of systems that I learned from my business experience And I want to take it into the self-help world. And I know that like the topic of self-help was like beaten to the ground in the late 90s, early 2000s. But as a product of that environment, like hello, chicken soup for the soul, I was all over that. For those of us out there that are very much just in line with mindset work, growth, evolving, you know, there is always going to come a moment where you're like, okay, do I just keep doing this thing that's, you know, responsible and an industry that, you know, is known to make money? Or do I give up everything and tell people how to be happy? And I decided literally this last 
week when at a networking event in Cape May, a women's networking event, um, you know, we were all kind of airing what challenges we were going through. And I discussed this very challenge. Just like I really am in a transitional phase that I know I should have started three years ago. And certainly this podcast was absolutely what I thought was a beautiful in the middle outlet. I get to talk about self-help growth when I'm speaking with my interviewees and all these thought leaders and entrepreneurs and just the amazing people I've been able to speak with. I come to see that self-growth is the literal only reason why they are where they are in their business and their life. And I found myself, you know, in the beginning, it was very business strategy focused questions. And, you know, literally 10 episodes in, interviews in, I found myself just wanting to know more about the person, how they tick and what they've been through and what did they learn and how did they grow and what were their personal challenges. And that has come to be what the Make Life Rich Movement podcast is all about. And now that I feel like the show perfectly represents me, the journey that I'm currently going through, where I'm at in my life, you know, I've been bringing a lot, I've been drawing a lot of people to me that are just continuing to give me great content to keep fueling the message of you are worthy, you are valid, your feelings matter, you are absolutely supposed to be happy, you are allowed to be happy, it is your right to have positive thinking over way the negative thinking, no matter what anyone you know thinks or says to the otherwise. And in deciding at this women's event after kind of speaking my grievances and hearing their responses, this is what I'm supposed to do. And I've always known that, but they reciprocated the fact that this would be something that would interest them. They would want to learn a little bit more about what it is that I talk about all the time and, and the growth that I've been through and what I had to do to get there. And it has been a journey that started in 2010 as, as far as my self growth is concerned. It was a hot shit Hot Mess Express in 2010, guys. Sack Attack, full, full full-fledged mess. Blackout alcoholic, like in a terrible, disgusting, toxic relationship where I just had no value for myself at all. Gave, gave, gave. Got cheated on, taken advantage of. And, you know, kind of at that rock bottom moment where so much grief poured out of me that literally had nothing to do with this person or the breakup. But it was the first time that I really had allowed myself to kind of like open and release a little bit of that steam from the generator that was my body from all of the stress and grief and anxiety from my dad's sickness throughout my life. And I realized like, all right, I can't be here anymore. I have to figure out how to get out of this. And that was kind of where the positive thinking journey began. I had to trick myself into becoming a more positive person and not allowing defeat and negativity and pessimism to like ruin my day every day, all day for years at a time. So much so that it became my personality and my attitude. And over the years of certainly like sharpen the sword by like leveling up the knowledge that I'm acquiring and like, okay, so I've learned about positive thinking. Now let's learn about mindset that is leaning towards like the manifestation era. And let's lean a little bit more towards trusting and believing that like whatever is meant for you is going to come for you no matter what. And that every lesson and tribulation you encounter was meant for you. And it's something that you need to use as a tool to like get you to that next step. So all of that is to say that... I am finally dipping my toes back into the entrepreneurial side of things. Podcasting for the last year has been magnificent. I absolutely love this. Um, Nothing will be changing here, of course. This is my full-time focus. But for the sheer amount of help that I want to provide, and I am one person, my goal has always been to put together just really easy to use resources and guides to help people in that place where they know they're at rock bottom for their emotion and they want to just get a blueprint on how to get to the next step. This is not going to solve all your problems because this is truly a pebbles in the jar journey. Like you are forever just building upon the last skill set you got to help you self-regulate your emotions to the next one, to the next one. So this is absolutely a lifetime journey, as is being a negative pessimist that just is like poo-poo, black clouds, bad luck, victim mentality. That is also a long-time sentence. So you could have it be a long-time sentence, or you could have it be a long-time journey full of joy and expansion and growth and happiness and passion and purpose. The other thing that you find along this journey is that 
in freeing yourself of the negativity, in opening and allowing yourself to have this channel of just like sheer sky's the limit, you're going to find a place where your purpose starts to bubble up. And you're like, hmm, I have loved that my whole life. I am really good at this one thing. I do really care a ton about this particular subject. Like, absolutely, maybe this is something that like I should circle back to and dig around a little bit and see where my skill sets can help me to magnify or amplify or increase or improve this particular thing that feels like my purpose. And for me, that purpose was this podcast. Starting this podcast and simultaneously creating and launching my first course, I cannot even explain to you how it turned my skeleton inside out and exposed all the parts of me that needed to be upgraded and replaced because it was just that time in my life where the growth was like, we're all the way up. <laughs> like we were going. It was, it was like compound growth on growth on growth on growth. It was overwhelming, but beautiful and great and exhausting and terrifying and made me feel like dog shit. And then I had to realize like, I feel like dog shit because my value's in the toilet. And why is my value in the toilet? Because I had like mother wound and father wound issues. And then I got to the bottom of that and I figured that stuff out. And then that just opened up a whole new part of me that then exposed a little bit more and like, Ooh, little rabbit trails here and there and Hansel and Gretel shit all over the place. And this has been such a beautiful occurrence in my life that if I could bottle it up and just give it to you in a pill to swallow, I would in a second because I want everyone to feel this way and everyone deserves to feel this way. To have the power of knowing inside of you that you were put here for a reason and that reason is the thing you're likely ignoring and that thing you're ignoring is because you're probably putting other things that someone told you is more important on a pedestal because you don't value yourself and your thoughts and your feelings and your desires because you've been taught to put someone else's ahead of you. And it may have not been a malicious thing. It may have just been something you picked up from your parents and the way that they behaved and how they interacted. But you have a choice. And that is the beauty of being a human with a soul and some intellect and some like chutzpah to you, you have the ability to make a choice that this is no longer something that you want to do. You have the ability and the choice to literally atom bomb your life and start over. No one said life was going to be easy all of the time, but trust and believe the hardest moments are the most rewarding and they never feel that way until they're gone. And I encourage you to put the metal to the fire and the metal being your ecosystem of emotions, mindset, mentality. What's the toolkit that you have to help yourself in hard times? What's the appreciation value that you have during the good times? Like, It's just such a beautiful journey to find yourself on. And I absolutely would love to be a guide for those that are looking for a little bit of help on this path because it can feel overwhelming and This all kind of came to me while trying to understand and process and alleviate the 20 plus years of grief that I had experienced with my father's illness, just my family having to deal with such traumatic things for so long. We were all so burnt out through those literal 20 years of absolute emotional turmoil every day, waking up and like wondering like, not only is my dad alive, but let alone like, how's he going to feel today? Is he going to be sick as hell today? Is he, is my mom going to be upset today and cry because she's watching her husband feel sick? Is like, is my sister stressed and burnt out? Cause like, she just hears my parent, you know, like there's just so many things that were just making it even worse. And I got bitter and I got angry and I took things out on the world and I had rage for a really long time prior to 2010. Rage was like my personality trait. Like I would fight grown men in the bar in Wildwood, New Jersey in my hometown. Like not proud of it, not proud of it, (laughs) but I was always known as that ballsy mouthy bitch that would just, was just waiting to put somebody in their place. I just had so much pain inside of me that the only way that felt safe that I could control to get it out without completely losing my shit was to have rage and anger. And it was toxic, not only to me, but it was exhausting to those around me. It made a lot of people that had known me my whole life tolerate me, but like it wasn't a good look, you know? And it really took me taking like a really hard look at myself. Like my dad would always say, the truth hurts where they have to hear it or say it. 
I heard it a lot. And I said it a lot. But the thing about saying it to myself was that it was the first time that I had been truthful to myself. Because the overwhelming thing that I was always thinking about, I couldn't be truthful with myself with. Which was, your dad is ill. And one day he and everyone you love is going to die. They're going to be gone forever. Never to see them again in their earthly form. Ever. For as long as you live, they will not be alongside you. And I couldn't accept that truth. And... I did everything I could to live in the present moment to avoid it, but it was with the wrong intention behind it. All it was doing was creating a pressure boiler like I was just waiting to explode, like blow a piston and have a problem. Like it was a really tumultuous time in my life. My health was starting to get just really unbalanced. And as a result, I'm still dealing with autonomic and immune system resets that are just from my cortisol firing for so long. So there were health implications too that have come on the positive side from being able to get a hold of myself and take myself out of that place of emergency and survival and panic and chaos and create a place of overwhelming abundance, peace, happiness. And that's not to say I feel happier, peaceful, or abundant all of the time. I don't. And anyone that tells you that is probably lying to themselves and to you, like, innocently. Because they don't really know. But happiness, like grief, is a fluctuating beast. You are never going to be able to pinpoint it down and hold it down and keep it there forever. It's not possible. And to be honest, happiness is only enjoyable when you have the exact opposite, suffering, grief, sadness, to pit against it, to feel the full polarity of the two. Suffering for me has been my greatest teacher and suffering in the sheer uh, act of trying to grow away from it led me to start growing as a person because I knew that I could handle this more if I gave myself a certain set of tools in my toolkit to get me to a place where I'm not only reparenting, I'm rebuilding, I'm rewiring my brain, I'm retraining my nervous system, like I'm taking it all down to where I want. Retaking control over my life, my mind, my emotions, and no longer allowing them to run on this autopilot that has never been mine to begin with. In Reaching this place of just really knowing that like I am absolutely everywhere that I'm meant to be and in going to that networking meeting and really just full-fledged being like, okay, people do want to learn about these things. I have five people in front of me right now that are telling me if I had a course or a workshop or had an event, they would attend it. And just hearing that from a physical person that isn't related to me and doesn't love me, like My husband is so supportive and he's very much, he's not a yes person. He's not a yes man. He tells me often, no, I don't like that. No, that doesn't make sense. Like, well, what happened to this? What happened to that? And I have always had his support 100%, but he's not a woman and he isn't actively going through the things that I've gone through. And it just kind of so happened that all of these women, we all had a lot in common, a lot in common to where in sharing our grievances and what our challenges were, we all recognize that there's a a thin line going through all of them at the base of it and the core of it. And that made me realize that there is truly room not only for me to kind of build an offering around what I've dealt with for the last 20 years of my life in a positive way that's going to help others. Like I absolutely would have paid for some type of guide to help me, especially as a preteen when I like needed that kind of mindset building the most. Um, But I wondered kind of up until that moment of hearing women that are on similar paths and similar journeys that this was something they'd find interesting. It was like I was getting the customer feedback that I had been looking for to really just give this a go. So in saying that... I have some really robust and beautiful business strategy products that are now going to be on indefinite summer sale. Where are we at? We've got a month and a half left of summer. I'll even make it two months to include local summer. If you're Kate May local, you know what that means. So we'll give it through midsummer. But I am going to be selling my course, which was 
priced at $2,500. It's literally replacing $10,000 plus work of PR and business strategy hiring. Um, it's absolutely replacing an employee, especially now that you have AI at your fingertips. You could literally take my entire course and utilize AI as your assistant to get it all done in a very short period of time. Um, I also have a workbook, a 40 plus page workbook that's going to help you to begin that pre-strategy creation process for your business. It's going to get you thinking about what you want to do with your business, how you're going to grow, what are your brand pillars, what are you standing on, what's your focus, what's your mission, how are you going to sell these products, what's going to be the strategy around building that out. It is literally chock full with so much. And again, it replaces you hiring me for uh, seven. $750 an hour or $1,250 for two hour consultation fee to come to the same conclusion. Um, maybe not the same conclusion, but this is definitely replacing an hour consultation, we'll say. And uh, in putting these on indefinite sale um, for the summer, you should snap them up. It's a beautiful time to Start thinking about fall sales and winter sales, thinking about how you want to structure your business to make sure that you have everything just so, everything's perfect, ready to go, so that once busy season hits, and I know for summer, for a lot of people, summer is the busy season. I live in a tourism area, so this is absolutely busy season. So for locals, if you're listening, this is absolutely a time that I would start to consider what I want to do in the early fall that's going to maximize my ability to stay open through the winter. Um, and these are absolutely things that you can help put together your very self with this workbook. Um, if you have a business and you are really lacking all of the components of the system that have your sales, marketing, emails, social media, branding, products, overall strategy for your business has not been created yet and you kind of put the cart before the horse, this course is going to have you soup to nuts all crunched in and ready to go and it's going to replace the need for you to hire me to do it for you and it's going to replace man we'll say 30 plus hours of youtubing to figure out what i can tell you in five and a half hours with 40 plus templates uh the workbook comes with the course if you purchase it and i'll include that in the summer sale too and um that's that so click the link in the show notes to access all of that um so the course 2500 going to sell it for 99. Snap it up. Okay. Snap it up. As I said, that's 10 K worth of PR that you don't have to pay for that. I already bundled down or boiled down to 2,500 and now you get to access it for 99. So like if there were ever a time guys, it's now. And the workbook was 49 and I'm going to do that for 999. So the link in the show notes will take you there and get you there doing that. Now, I don't want to miss the opportunity in case you are in a similar place where you feel like you want to kind of leave the career behind that you're currently in, but you have this collateral, you have these, these projects, these products, like I have with my strategy course and my workbook. Put them in a summer sale and use this opportunity to rebrand during the slow time of year, typically for you, and start gearing up for the fall. This is literally the perfect time. And if you don't really understand what that means, you absolutely need to jump on that $99 course because it is going to lay out for you events. Like everything that you need to think about to be prepared for the holiday season is included in that. I also have an episode specifically discussing all types of holiday sales. There's a few different episodes. So be sure to comb through the Make Life Rich Movement page. You're going to find so many Sunday strategy sessions where I break down various types of events and just sales uh, initiatives that you can kind of create to get you to a place that's very supportive of having a robust and successful fall and winter sales season. So uh, it's kind of a no-brainer, let's be honest. And uh, I don't know about you, but you probably don't want to be spending 10K right now on a business strategist and publicist to come in and tell you what to do with your business. You kind of already have an idea, but you just want a roadmap. You want a blueprint. It's going to take you through it step by step. This is absolutely going to be that system for you. So again, 10K 
worth of hiring me boiled down to $2,500 that is now on summer sale for $99. It's a no-brainer. Thank you for trusting me. Also, I encourage you to do the same thing. And I want to see what your summer sale is. So if you are going to take this rebranding model that I just kind of spit out in this interview, please shoot me a DM. I would love to follow along on your rebranding journey. Let's be rebranding buddies. And uh, please keep me informed about anything sales-wise that you're doing. I would love to pitch it and promote it for you on uh, the show and the website. And uh, I think... It's a little rusty of a finish, but I feel like everything has been said that needs to be said. And it means so much to me that you tune into these episodes. I can't thank you enough. If this episode resonated with you, please share it with someone that you know is in a space that they could use some growth in their business, help them take advantage of this summer sale. And if you know that someone near and dear to you is in a space where they just want to work on themselves, tune them into the show. There's so much value here in the interviews that I have. Um, We're coming up to 200 episodes in the next week, which is so incredible and so crazy. Uh, But share the show. Please rate and review on Spotify and YouTube if you haven't already. And if I have ever given you any bit of advice or you've heard something in an interview that just totally burst your soul wide open or changed something for you, it would mean the world to me if you left it in a voice note on um, the link in the show notes or you shot me a DM on Instagram, which the link is also in the show notes. Um, I would just, I would love to hear about your wins. It would mean a lot to me. So thank you so much, my Richies. It means the absolute world to have your attention and, and your love and just uh, your, your time and your presence. And uh, I will see you on Tuesday. We have a really fun interview that I cannot wait for you to hear. Talk soon, my Richies, and have an amazing week ahead. And as always, make life rich.